Hello, in this video, let's look at a few more digital components that we might use in design. Now, as it was discussed in the previous video, digital systems are modularized. So let's look at some of the common digital building blocks of a system. So before we begin, let's quickly talk about two kinds of design we generally do in a digital systems. The first one is known as a combinatorial design. In this kind of a design, every node in the circuit is either designated as an input or connects to other nodes in the circuit. The circuit contains no cyclic paths, which means that every path visits each circuit node only once. That is, there is only a single direction of the flow of information. Once you give certain inputs, certain outputs will appear based on these inputs after some time right so information flow is unidirectional in a combinatorial circuit the other kind of circuit that we use many times is known as sequential design now sequential design is more common than combinatorial design because this reuses hardware and here what happens is that outputs at any point of time are not only dependent on the inputs but they're also related to some sort of a feedback so the output at any point may be dependent on the output at some point prior in time. So sequential design induces or introduces a concept of time in the system. Or in other words, this design has a memory component. It should have an ability of recalling what was what happened to the output some time back and use that to generate the current output. And that is why these, tip, these sequential circuits typically have what is known as a state variable or a state of a system which is a set of bits that are identified that contain all the information about the past. So when we talk about sequential design, we talk about state variables and transition of state variables. Now, when you add two bits, the result may be expressed as a two-bit word, one a sum and the other a carry to the next bitwise operation. So for example, if I had an adder, say two inputs A and B, an output sum, and a carry which is carry bit so what we are trying to do here is we're trying to build an adder so we'll initially start with building a two bit adder and then we'll see if we can extend it to larger bits this is the true table of the binary adder from which we get that the sum bit is nothing but an xor of a and b and the carry bit is a a and b so this is the circuit which implements addition of two bits A and B. This is sometimes denoted as the half adder. Right? And we'll talk about why it's called a half. Now to build an N bit adder, so what I want to do is I'm not going to be dealing with one bits, right? I'm going to be dealing with 16 bits, 32 bits, 64 bits. So when I want to design a adder that is able to do bitwise addition, this half adder is not enough because this half adder assumes that the input is only A and B. In reality, when I'm doing bitwise addition in an n-bit adder, at every input bit or at every location of a bit K, I'll have one bit from the A word, one bit from the B word, but I might have a carry bit from the previous bitwise operation and I need to generate a subsequent carry bit. So ideally, to build this bitwise addition, I need to think about three input terms, not two input terms, an AK, a BK, and an incoming carry bit. And that is what we do when we generate what is known as a full adder. So this full adder is critical because that helps us build bitwise addition in large numbers. So how is a full adder implemented? A full adder is implemented by taking it one, two bits at a time. So if I want to implement the sum bit, I first implement the sum of A and B, take the sum of A and B and then add C K minus one to it and generate the sum. To generate the carry, again, I take the carry bit of the second half adder and the carry bit of the first half adder and I add the two, right? So what you see here is I've used a module which is a half adder module to generate a larger module which is a full adder module and I will represent that full adder by this block diagram and denote it by the term FA. So it takes in three bits A K B K and C K minus one and it gives out a sum bit and a carry bit to the next stage. Right? So we have now generated a module or a piece of circuitry 
that can do two bit addition with a carry and generate a sum and a carry at the output. Now, once I have this, I can now go ahead and build a 4 bit adder, for example. What do I do with the 4 bit adder? I'm going to essentially take in the first two bits. Assume that my input bit is 0, input carry is 0. My first full adder computes the sum of the 0th bit and creates a carry that is then pushed into the next bit and so on and so forth. So by cascading four full adders, I'm able to generate a four bit adder here. Right? So the, my sum is present in this word, which is made up of S3, S2, S1 and S0 and I generate an output carry. So in this case, you see information is only flowing in this direction. And so this is a combinatorial circuit because information is only flowing from the lower bits to higher bits. Another important component that you might use is a multiplexer. So what is a multiplexer? Let's look at a very simple 2 is to 1 MUX. So a MUX or a multiplexer has a select variable. It has two inputs and an output. So what a MUX does is it is used to route signals. So based on the value of S0, I can let Y take the value of A0 or take the value of A1. So if I look at the truth table of the MUX, the MUX says that Y takes the value of A0 when the select bit is a 0 and takes the value of A1 when the select bit is a 1. And so using these MUXs, I can build a 2 is to the power of n to 1 MUX, which takes in 2 to the power of n bits lines has an n bit select word and is able to have one output so what the select word does is by applying this word i can choose either one of these lines to be connected to the output right so this mux is used a lot when we want to select from a certain set of inputs decoder what do i want to do here is i want to generate one of these lines or rather i want to generate a one on one of these lines when i give an input here so this input suppose my input is an zero it ensures that my d0 line becomes high my d1 line goes low and when my a0 is a one my d1 line goes high and my d0 line goes zero so this by using a decoder i'm able to select a particular line and again i can generalize it to an n to power n decoder again it has takes in an n bit word and it has two to the power of n lines here right and what it does is based on this word one of these lines goes high so this is used for selecting a certain line so we'll see this a lot when we design memories in this course memory decoders are a large part of the delay in a memory circuit. So one of the outputs is highlighted and we can design the decoder in such a way that it is either highlighted with a 1 or with a 0. That is, you make only one output 1 among all zeros or you make all, one output 0 among all 1s. The flip or the in operation of the decoder is the encoder and this is basically taking 2 power n inputs and converting it to a word. Right? So again, based on which of these lines goes high, it tells you the index of the line that has gone, gone high. We sometimes use what is known as a priority encoder. And a priority encoder can be designed such that only the higher subscript is sent out as the output of the encoder. Finally, we'll sometimes use what is known as a comparator. A comparator is a very basic building block of a digital system. Here I've shown a 4-bit comparator. It takes in two words, two 4-bit words. 4-bit word A and a 4-bit word B and it has three outputs which either indicate A is greater than B, A is equal to B or A is less than B. So this performs what is known as a logic operation between A and B and you can use that in multiple applications. So we looked at a few design blocks, decoders, muxes, adders and comparators. Many a times when you're designing, these are available off the shelf in your standard cell library and you can make a lot of logic circuits using these right and so you'll see that many a times while we'll use these to you know think about because of merit of technology think about how to optimize these these generally tend to be available from at a foundry level or available in the library and can be used to build your design